going? Okay. Hey, how are you doing today? It's George again, RRT, Registered Respiratory Therapist, and Rancher on the site. Anyways, what we're going to be talking about today with this series that's on my YouTube channel is baggers or manual, manual resuscitators. We use these to help people that have issues with breathing as long as their airway is open. So I'm going to show you how to set up and use one of these devices. I'm also going to show you the different components that you have when setting these things up so that they're assembled correctly. Now most of the time in the hospitals when you're working or whatever setting that you're working in, they're probably going to be already put together like so. And all you need to do is grab it, turn the oxygen flow on and start using the device. All right. So in the hospitals, it might look something like this. We've got our manual resuscitator or bagger as it's commonly called, hanging on the flow meters that are attached to the station outlet. And they should be attached to the oxygen station outlet, and these should be oxygen flow meters. So you should really be, if you're working anywhere within the hospital, and uh, in the operating room, but in the operating room it might be slightly different, because there's anesthetic gases there, you should have your, flow, your bagger attached to your flow meter that's hooked up to 100% oxygen. So we'll take the bagger, set up off, the manual set up off, and we'll show you the flow meter, these are the flow meters. This is what adjusts the flow coming to the device to ensure that you're ventilating your patient or bagging your patient with maximal FiO2. So we'll need the flow meters set to as high as they'll go. We'll also need some oxygen tubing that's attached to the manual resuscitator, and we'll also need the manual resuscitator itself in this configuration. So let's kind of take a look at the different parts of the manual resuscitator. So I get you to zoom in here. Thank you. So if we break this down, we'll take it apart and we'll put it back together again. The first thing we have is the mask. Now the mask is very important because it needs to maintain a seal between the patient's face and the mask itself. So the cushioning and how you place it on the patient's face is very important. You need to have a really good seal with the mask on the patient's face in order to create that positive pressure inside the device to be able to force the gas into the patient's lungs. So the mask really important. Next thing we have is what's called the optional reservoir. We also have, which comes off, the patient valve assembly right over here. Last but not least, we've got the bagger itself as well as the gas inlet valve assembly right down over here. So in order to have this manual resuscitator work properly, you have to have all these components on. So grab the, man, the uh, manual resuscitator, the bagger itself, make sure you've got your optional reservoir attached, grab your patient valve assembly if it hasn't been attached yet, it just simply connects like so, and then grab your mask. Okay. So when your bagger is ready to go, it should look something like this. Now before you use it on a patient, it's probably a really good idea to pressure test your bagger to ensure that it functions. And some baggers allow you to do two pressure tests on it, one at the patient valve assembly at the top and another one at the gas in the valve assembly. Some uh, manual resuscitators only allow you to do one pressure test. And the most important one is that positive pressure test. The positive pressure test checks for leaks. It tells you if you've got a leak somewhere within the patient valve assembly, the bagger itself, or the gas in the valve assembly in some cases. So to do the positive pressure test, all you need to do before you start ventilating your patient with one of these manual resuscitators is simply grab the device, walk off the patient valve assembly right over here where the gas would go to the patient, and squeeze the manual resuscitator. You should feel resistance. You shouldn't feel any kind of uh, gas leaking. You shouldn't be able to compress the bag. You shouldn't be able to hear gas leaking out either. So if you can squeeze this and you're squeezing against the good resistance, and gas doesn't go anywhere, but stays in the manual resuscitator's resuscitation bag itself, then you know you've got a decent uh, bagger. There's no leaks in it, okay? Give it a squeeze, gas goes to the patient now, okay? So you can attach your mask. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the one that's hanging on the wall. We're gonna roll the patient in. In this particular case, it's not a real patient. We're gonna roll in this patient right over here. Obviously, it's not a real patient. Lock the bed. Now, before you approach the patient, you should always ensure that you have the proper personal protective equipment on before you deal with the patient. So you might need to have your gloves, like well, you will need to have gloves on. You might need a face shield. 
you might need booties, uh, you might need a gown or something like that, but you have the personal protective equipment that's designated wherever you're working that's specific for that environment or for that particular patient. In this particular case, I'm just going to simply use some gloves. So I'll grab my gloves. If I needed a mask, I'd put a mask on. If I needed a mask with face shield, I'd have that on as well, etc. So I just want to show you the technique of manually ventilating your patient with a manual resuscitator. Now remember what I said before, the airway needs to be open. So if you have a patient that you need to ventilate and you try to ventilate and you can't get gas to go into the patient's lower airway or through the upper airway to the lower airway, it could be a result of the patient positioning. Make sure that you've got your patient in this position right over here. Make sure there's a head tilt that's employed to help open up the patient's upper airway. You might also need to put in an OPA or an NPA. OPA stands for oral pharyngeal airway and NPA stands for nasal pharyngeal airway. So if you need to use those airways, have them at your disposal as well in case you need to use it to maintain an open airway for your patient. We'll grab the manual resuscitator. Now turn the oxygen on. Right now when the ball and the flow unit goes beyond the highest setting, we call that flush or full line. We don't know exactly what the flow is coming into the device, but we know it's going to be higher than 15 liters a minute because 15 liters per minute is the highest setting on our flow meter. So it's going to be in excess of that. Pressure test the bagger. No leaks. And now what we're going to do is we're going to ventilate our patient. Now when you ventilate your patient, it's important to ensure that this bag stays distended, but not too distended and that you're, now you're going to cause inside your patient any kind of peep that's not wanted. So you may have to adjust the flow down if it's coming into it too fast. But you want to make sure this bag stays distended while you're ventilating your patient to some degree so that you're giving your patient maximal FiO2 or maximal oxygen concentration. So the firstly, you need to size the mask to the patient, making sure that it's going to seal the patient. So take a good look. You can pretty much tell if the mask is too big or too small. This particular mask is going to lie over top of the patient's nose. This part here is going to lie over top of the patient's nose and bridge of the nose. And this part here is going to wind up somewhere between the lower lip and the chin of the patient. So I've already pressure tested. I'll attach my mask. Now I should be able to ventilate my patient. So I'm going to the patient, tell the patient what you're going to do, always speak to your patient, and then place the mask on the patient's face. And then using this E, C configuration, E, C configuration, have your index finger and your thumb on the mask pushing down while these three fingers that form the E go underneath the patient's chin pulling up. So you're pulling up the patient's chin or jaw mandible and you're pushing down with the bagger at the same time trying to create a seal with this mask so you're going down like so with the mask on the patient's face trying to create a seal and then ventilate when you ventilate the patient look for chest rise it should be very fairly um, I wouldn't say easy but you should be able to apply just a small amount of pressure to the mandible resuscitator and be able to successfully ventilate the patient's lungs and have gas go in there now all you need to do is just focus on the rate that you want to deliver to your patient. Make sure you've got gas going into your patient. If gas wasn't going into the lungs, we don't have no PA in place, but what we could do is just simply reposition the patient's head and try to ventilate again. Now what also could be the problem is you don't have a good enough seal between the mask and the patient's face. If that's the concern or the issue, you try to ventilate, nothing's going in. Just simply try to make sure that you've got the mask lined up appropriately. Your fingers are spread out in this EC configuration, EC, Echo Charlie, and try to ventilate. And then just focus on the rate and the volume you want your patient to get. Make sure you have a good chest rise, but you don't want to use too much chest rise, or you don't want to use too much pressure to have an excessive chest rise either. Now one thing you'll also notice with this bagger that I'm using on the patient, let's say the patient's good now, You also want to make sure if you're bagging a patient that doesn't have an artificial airway in place with a cuff, never use PEEP. So you'll notice in my configuration here, if you know what PEEP valves are, I don't have a PEEP diverter or a PEEP valve on my device. The reason for that is I was just ma uh, manually ventilating my patient that didn't have an artificial airway in place that could secure the lower airway. So we don't want to use a uh, PEEP valve because if you're ventilating a patient that doesn't have that airway protection, the same amount of pressure that's applied to the upper airway in the lungs 
would also be applied to the patient's esophagus and stomach. So when you're using this, you could be ventilating the stomach to some degree as well. So don't use PEEP when, you, when you're manually ventilating your patients that don't have artificial airways and that could protect the patient's lower airway. Now when you're done using the bagger, simply shut the flow meter off so you don't waste oxygen. And then simply hang this back here if it's going to be used on the patient again or whatever safe receptacle you have for holding or hanging onto the, uh, allow the baggers to be hanged onto or hung onto, however that works. And then um, use it again when you need to use it again. There's things called instant on valves, but I'll show you an instant on valve in another video at some point in time. If you didn't have to use it again, the patient was all done with it, they were transferred to a different unit and the bagger didn't go with them, you'd simply, if it was a reusable bagger, send it off for cleaning, the appropriate uh, department would look after that, but you just simply have to place it in the dirty utility basin or container or whatever storage room they have for that. If it's going to be cleaned, if it's a single-use, one-time bagger, disposable bagger, you would discard all the plastics, like the tubing bagger itself, and that would go into the appropriate bin for disposal. So that's in essence how a uh, bagger is put together and a bagger is used on a patient for bag valve mask ventilation, also referred to as a BBM ventilation as well. Hope you enjoyed it, and again, if you get a chance to, do you have any other uh, things you want to look up, check out my YouTube channel. There's other videos on different things respiratory therapists do and how to do them at a basic level. And uh, if you have any suggestions or comments, please note that down on the, on the YouTube channel as well. Thanks so much. Have a great day.